The 1950s are considered the golden age of America, when life seemed like it couldn't get much better. With that outlook, there were bound to be certain trends that influenced popular culture in ways that helped to define the decade. Today, some of these things may seem silly or outdated, but during the 1950s, they were just how things were. So let's see how many of these things you were guilty of in the 1950s. Conical bras were something that many ladies loved to wear during the 1950s. These pointy undergarments were made famous by some of the biggest stars from that time, including Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, and Jane Russell. They were sometimes referred to as bullet bras, and they challenged the good girl persona that defined the decade. For most girls in the 1950s, a tight-fitting sweater paired with a bullet bra was all they needed to pull off the perfect outfit. Remember wearing cat-eye-shaped glasses? These were the optical accessory of choice for many women, and it was really the first time that glasses had been designed for a more feminine clientele. The unmistakable wingtip on the upper rim is what resembles traditional cat eyes, and it gave them their classic look. So it's no wonder they could be found on movie stars, and later housewives and teenage girls. The look was so iconic, it is still a widely embraced retro look that remains popular today. Rediscover your past by digitizing your family's memories with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about preserving your legacy, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection. Within every decade, you can find some pretty odd trends that young people latch on to. And in the 1950s, young ladies started a trend that should rank among the most bizarre. They started wearing dog collars on the outside of their bobby socks as an anklet. These collars were a way for teenage girls to signal their social status. There were even rules that dictated which leg to wear them on, depending on if you were single or going steady. It really depended on where you lived that decided which leg designated a relationship. But either way, it is one of the most unusual fads from this time. In the late 1940s, people caught on to the cowboy spirit and embraced all things Western. During the 1950s, it reached a peak, and children of all ages couldn't get enough, especially young boys. It seemed every kid owned some cowboy outfit, which included a hat, a Western shirt, and a cap gun with a holster, and they loved to run around the neighborhood pretending to be the Lone Ranger. This was also a time when the whole family gathered around their new TV to watch Westerns together, like the Roy Rogers show, Gunsmoke, or The Rifleman. Another fad that dealt with announcing your relationship status was something called getting pinned. This was a more romantic gesture that occurred during the college years, when a boy would offer a girl his school pin to wear on their sweater or jacket. This officially meant they were going steady and dating each other exclusively. Girls would proudly announce if they got pinned, and their friends would be happy to celebrate the achievement. The 1950s was a time where couples were very much ceremonial and traditional in their values, but the charming trend of getting pinned would fade by the 1960s. There's a legend that on the night of March 21st, 1952, at the University of Michigan, the very first panty raid took place. Hundreds of male students stormed a women's dorm and took all the underwear they could find. After word got out, the practice of panty raids spread to other colleges across the country. The panties and other undergarments were seen as trophies and proved that a societal barrier had been crossed. Although some of these escapades were unwelcomed, many were often carried out with the encouragement and help of the coeds themselves. With comic books and other youth magazines being a popular way to pass the time, it's no wonder that the advertisements within their pages would catch the attention of their young audience. Uncle Milton's Ant Farm was one of these ads that kids couldn't pass up. For just a couple dollars, you would receive the farm mailed to your house, and then later the live ants would show up. The plastic farm scene atop the tunnels of sand were fascinating to watch as the ants moved around the granules of sand to build a world of their own. 
Another fad you may have been guilty of in the 1950s, especially if you were a boy that was big into westerns, was the coonskin cap. This furry hat with a raccoon tail attached was made famous by Fess Parker, who wore one while playing the role of Davy Crockett in the 1954 Disney miniseries. The Disney show alone generated millions of dollars in sales of coonskin caps and resurrected interest in folk heroes from the past, especially ones like Davy Crockett, who was known for killing bears with his bare hands. Every decade seems to have its own group of counterculture movements, and the beatniks were the 1950s. These were generally book-smart intellectuals, or so they thought, that loved to read poetry and shunned material things. Coffee shops and underground clubs were the gathering places for the beat generation, and with the help of literary leaders like Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac to lead the way, black turtlenecks, goatees, and berets became their calling card. During the 1950s, if a woman was getting dressed up for an event, there's a good chance she would have slid on a pair of silk or nylon gloves to complete the outfit. Formal wear was pretty common during this decade, and gloves on women became part of the etiquette of going out into public. From church gatherings to shopping, gloves were an important accessory to finish off any look. The general rule was the shorter the sleeve, the longer the glove. Although Tupperware was invented by Earl Tupper in the 1940s, the 1950s made it a phenomenon. Housewives couldn't get enough of the colorful containers that kept their food fresh, and a Tupperware party gave women a reason to get together and socialize. Many of these women tried their hand at being a consultant too, hosting parties for neighbors and making Tupperware synonymous with suburbia, and pretty prolific considering how products are marketed today. It was the ultimate influencer marketing campaign that predated social media influencers by more than 60 years. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and make sure to sign up for the Recollection Road newsletter using the link in the description. Recollection Road and Legacy Box both believe it's important to preserve the past. If you're like me, there's a box of your family's treasured home movies and photos tucked away somewhere, and Legacy Box can help you preserve them digitally. The process is a simple and safe solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or to the cloud. Just send in your Legacy Box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Legacy Box is trusted by over 1 million people, and it's all done right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching the other videos in this series. While you're at it, hit subscribe and share Recollection Road with someone you know. As always, thank you so much for watching.